Instagram is the highest converting social media platform for food. And now we're seeing an uptick in TikTok. TikTok is becoming a very high converting platform for food. Why? Because food is appealing to the eye as well as it is to the mouth. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am here with my good friend, Patrick, who owns Trailer King Builders. And I think it is what? You have the largest group on social media for food trucks and trailers, correct? It is now. Yes, sir. It, it has to be, right? It has to be. <laughs> yep. So con- congratulations on that. That's a pretty cool accomplishment in and of itself. Thank you. So what are the top challenges in, in this space, especially when it comes to I wouldn't say mobile restaurants, but food trucks, food trailers. Before we do that, tell us a little bit about Trailer King Builders, what you guys do, what you, you know, and your your whole process there. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on, man. We started our company going on four years, Uh, started from building one unit at a time. We help entrepreneurs establish businesses, grow, scale, or start a mobile food business, be it either a food truck or concession trailer. We work with a lot of startups, if you want to call it, individuals that are passionate about the food industry and want to get started with a food truck. We've also worked with a lot of national chains, established restaurants, established bars, other types of businesses that need to provide some sort of food service in their space, like colleges and universities or athletic parks, that kind of stuff. And so going on four years now, and we do about 20 to 25 builds a month. Nice. That's pretty cool. And and I could see that just my thought process since the pandemic, I think it's more important that people have a secondary solution. If you own a restaurant, I don't think the same rules apply as if you have a food truck or trailer, correct? Yeah, the pandemic did shift the thinking somewhat. A lot of people feel more comfortable being outdoors. And so restaurants that have to abide by certain mandates that have to abide by maybe a number of seats that they're allowed to use, or maybe when they're only allowed to be at 25% capacity or 50% capacity or how to shut down altogether. A food truck, for example, doesn't have to shut down because, well, there are no seating customers, they're outdoors. Everybody just walks up to the window, takes their food and goes on their way. So yeah, it's a lot of the industry was already growing, you know, steadily, but the pandemic definitely boosted the growth and more of than boost. I think it's more of a uh, necessity Yeah, to get people outdoors. People feel more comfortable, et cetera. That makes sense. And it's kind of like that old, like, Hey, do you want to lease your house or buy your house? Right. Very few restaurants actually own the building. But yep. if you think about it, once you they have the food truck or trailer or concession, once that's paid off, like they own everything. There's no rent. Yep. That's pretty solid too. So let's let's go into some of the challenges that you see people that have food trucks or, or run into all the time. Because we, we work together a good amount on those. So if we can bring shed some light to it, maybe we can help a lot of people avoid some of those uh, pitfalls or roadblocks. Yeah. A lot of people, I mean, there's challenges. Once you're open, there's a ton of challenges that you're going to face in operating something like this. It's a mobile food business. You have to prepare for anything that may happen uh, along the way. You know, we, we're talking about mobile food units that, If your generator breaks down while you're operating somewhere, then you got to figure out how to how to have a backup plan for something like that. One of the biggest challenges I see is startups, people wanting to start up their business, not knowing how to get it funded. And funding is probably the most important part. On average, you're going to invest at least on the low end, twenty five thousand on the high end could be up to $200,000 for a food truck. So if you're somewhere in between, imagine you need $50,000. You're passionate about food. You have a steady job and you want to do it on the weekends, kind of like a side hustle. Yeah. So how do you get $50,000 to go and start a food truck? That's a big challenge for a lot of people. A lot of people Mm -hmm. come to our doors. They have savings. They have 401ks. They tap into those, but others do not. They have some funds, but they they don't have all of it. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what we do, and you know this, we give them simple interest term loans. So they have 650 credit Mm -hmm. 
and 50,000 approvable income, we can get them anywhere from 30,000 to 100,000. We actually just got somebody 140, but that's a rare case. And basically it's over, call it five years, and yep. the rates start at 6% and go up from there. But it's simple. We can get them done, approved in 24 to 48 hours, and money in their account not too long after that. Now, I have a question for you because a lot of people ask me when they're going through this, how much operating cash should I have in reserve? So let's just say someone comes to you and we get them the 50000 for a trailer, right? Not the cheapest, definitely not the most expensive, but it's going to do the trick. How much do they need in reserve? Because I see business owners make that mistake too all the time. Yep. So what do you think is a good run rate? At least three to six months of your working capital, I would suggest to start off with. Okay. You don't need that much inventory because you're in a truck that if you're selling food, it's perishable. So you don't really need to purchase a whole lot of inventory when it comes to food at the beginning or at all. You know, you buy as you go. It's a cost yeah. of goods. But you do want to have to cover any rental expenses, mm -hmm. right? Any overhead, utilities and things like those. Then you also want to cover for labor okay. because your sales are not going to be at its peak from the start. You're going to ramp up. So as you're ramping up, that's when you can get away from having to have a working capital reserve, which I wouldn't recommend to ever get away from having a working capital reserve. I would always reserve three to six months, regardless of how good your cash flow is. Always keep six months reserves, even if you're making a shit ton of money, right? 100%. So three to six months. So yeah, essentially the loan that you need to start is not only for your food truck. So let's say you only get $50,000 and all that's all you have. I would not go out and get a $50,000 truck because that means you won't have money for permits. You won't have money for your opening inventory. You won't have money for, for marketing. You won't have money for labor. And so I would go and see if I can get something that will fit my needs in the thirty dollars to $35,000 range, having $15,000 for the remainder. Got it. Smart. So what's the next top challenge that these guys face? Like marketing, for example. Let's go into that. How do you think a food truck should position themselves marketing for a location because some of them move around and some stay in maybe one or two spots, right? So I'm sure people struggle with this. Yep. One of the biggest mistakes I see in, in food truck operators is that they don't invest in marketing. Okay. They expect people to show up out of nowhere. And if you're definitely, if you're mobile, there's no way you can just expect people to show up. If you're depending on foot traffic, I mean, you have to have probably the top of the top in terms of what it comes to location, mm -hmm. right? Because if there is foot traffic, then yes, you could get that $1,500 to $2,500 in sales a day. But let's say you're new. People don't know who you are. They're just driving by. They're not going to just stop. And yeah, they might be curious about it. But one of the things that I see is that they don't take advantage of the power of social media, especially when you have a product like food that you can go and you create a video on Instagram. Instagram is the highest converting social media platform for food. And now we're seeing an uptick in TikTok. TikTok is becoming a very high converting platform for food. Why? Because food is appealing to the eye as well as it is to the mouth, right? Yeah, absolutely. So if you have a fucking great product, you have to show it. And then, yeah. then you have to put it in front of the people's eyes that are in your area. So a lot of food truck operators, they don't know how to use Facebook. They don't, they don't know how to create targeted ads, Facebook ads, or Instagram ads. They don't know how to create audiences. And so they expect this growth of sales to come naturally. That's a huge challenge. And we're helping them break that through the Facebook group, through different programs that we offer and helping them build up a social media presence. The best food trucks out there, you go to their social media and you can tell that they're crushing it. Yeah. It's a, they have like a cult like following too. Yes, sir. Right. They build raving fans, not just clients, but raving fans. Absolutely. Not building customer lists, not, you know, you have customers yeah. build a list, communicate with them. You should be communicating with your customers at least once a week mm -hmm. at a minimum. 100%. What's a, what's another issue that you see a lot of them run into at any given point? Uh, permitting is an issue, not an issue, but I think it's a challenge for them understanding the process. A lot of people go out and they invest in a truck trailer without doing their due diligence first and what is required to get started in their area. Mm -hmm. So I've had clients that invested twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, not with us, but with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Then they go and try to get their permits and that unit doesn't pass any of the codes. So they thought they were getting a 
a unit that will pass code and they invested 25,000 and lo and behold, they have to go in and invest another 15,000 to get it up to code. So that is another challenge or another, I want to say like, I don't want to call it a challenge. It's like a step that is missed in the process is one of the first things we teach in acquiring a concession trailer or food truck. If a customer comes to us and they're brand new to this industry, they have no idea what they're doing. One of the first things we teach is, hey, are you familiar with the permitting process in your area? Where are you going to go? Learn that process first and then go out and understand how to get open. So can you take us roughly just through how you would describe what that process looks like? Usually, I know it's going to change because there's so many different municipalities. Just to give it like a rough breakdown for someone that's listening and that might not have uh, known about this. So the majority of the counties in the U.S., so it's a county-based uh, permitting process. You go to your local health department and they will have a mobile food unit requirement checklist okay. or opening list that you have to abide by. It's going to require that you have an LLC or sole proprietorship or a DBA. It's going to require that you go and get some tests done in terms of serve safe. So a, a manager serve safe certification, just like any restaurant. And then the unit itself will have to abide by certain regulations for that specific county. It could be what type of floor is used, what type of water heaters in the unit, what type of clean water tank, gray water tank, the type of hood. There are one of the strictest is L.A. County, and um, they go as far as they need to see the spec sheets for every single piece of equipment in that unit. The AC, the heater. They want to see where it was built, how it was built to pass inspect, to, to get a permit with that county. Wow. Yeah. So doing your due diligence in that part of the process is key to getting open. Got it. That is crazy. What, what else? What, what's some of the other roadblocks and challenges we see in this space? Man, besides startup capital and then finding locations, uh, knowing how to get around and pulling a trailer, for example, that could be a huge roadblock. Hey, bro, not a lot of people know how to pull these things. They'll go through neighborhoods and tear the roof off. The no, fan, the extractor fan off the trailer, not knowing that they have a certain clearance. So it could be tricky. Running a food trailer, I would say, is harder than a restaurant. The restaurants, you have more space, right, for inventory to store, to bring in employees. You're limited space in a food truck. You're mobile. If you're at a mobile location and something happens to the truck, you pretty much SOL until you get it back up. If you're at a, lo- at a restaurant, maybe you can go buy something to replace a piece of equipment or you can use something else in the meantime, or it's a lot easier to get a technician out to your restaurant than it is to a food truck in, I don't know, who knows where. So there are a ton of challenges when it comes to this business. Marketing is one of the biggest ones I see. Everybody loves to go and use Square, for example. We'll we'll tap into that. Everybody doesn't know that there's a lot of companies out there that can provide credit card processing Mm -hmm. at a lower rate than Square, but they just go to Square because that's what everybody uses. But, you know, Square does a fantastic job of marketing it itself. Yeah, Square is super expensive, right? And and because, again, this is something we help your clients with. And um, I'll break everything down for them right here and now. Square is the simplest. It's a plug and play, but Square, you're never going to get that customer service. And if something goes wrong, like someone charges you back, like you're doing a catering event and God forbid they don't like it. And Square gets that phone call. Hey, I didn't get what I was supposed to get here. Well, we weren't happy with the service. That money is going to be held for a very long time. Yep. So there are solutions, right? There's two ways that all payment processing works. Either one, The business owner pays the fee, which is traditional. In that, you can expect to pay anywhere from, let's say, 2.25% overall effective rate, meaning for every dollar that you charge, you're paying two and a quarter to, let's say, 3%. Square puts everything at, at, I think, 3.75. Yeah. Okay. If you do real volume, they may lower that down a little bit. Most food trucks don't do enough volume to get that next tier. Next, you can do what's called cash rewards or cash discount, Mm -hmm. meaning you pass that fee to the client. That fee that you're passing is usually 3.99%. So someone comes in and it's a $20 ticket. 
instead of them charging $20, they're going to charge $20.80 roughly. So it's not a big difference, but the pro- the difference is that client, if you extrapolate that over the year, you could be saving 10, 15, $20,000, which is basically could be like a half a month or full month worth of sales. Right. And, yeah. and then there's technology that comes with that too. So what's one of the biggest challenges right now? Getting manpower. Well, if you have a QR code ordering system and people can just walk up, scan the menu, order right from there and pay from their phone, how much more efficient is that than screaming at everybody through the window and waiting on a huge line? Also, a system like that can track, hey, if you brought 100 briskets today and you're at 99, well, you don't want to sell brisket 100 to 105 without knowing and having it taken off the menu. That technology exists that can help you manage that inventory all in one. So between that and an outside menu board, that's a solution that we help with. And it's very, very popular. And you're going to ultimately, it pays for itself, one in efficiency and two in cost saving, right? Uh, Because at the end of the day, if you're not paying three plus percent to square and the clients are paying that fee, all you're really paying for then is the technology. And the technology really isn't that expensive because you know what? It will cut down manpower. So I think that's a huge one that people need to be aware of. Absolutely. What, what about operations? Because we haven't gone into this, but you have a tremendous background in the service industry, especially when it comes to operations. So what are some of the things that you see people that are clients go out, they have this great food truck, and now they run into issues? What do some of those issues look like? When it comes to operations, well, I was in the restaurant industry prior to getting into this uh, space. And I was responsible for the finances of a $25 million restaurant. And we used to manage the costs. If you can't control your costs in a restaurant industry, it could get away from you quick and it could Mm -hmm. add up over time. So you have, we, for example, I implemented a weekly dashboard where we would look at our weekly sales, weekly Mm -hmm. labor, weekly food cost, liquor, beer, and wine cost. Uh, essentially the prime cost, which is what a restaurant calls their uh, cost of goods plus labor. And there are metrics that you can follow. And if you stick to those metrics, you know that you have a successful restaurant or a food truck. It is essentially the same. If you have like, for example, I have a client that that does high end meals. So a, a plate from his truck is around 25 bucks, right? Okay. And he puts protein that it's pretty expensive. Yeah. Maybe a ribeye, he's lobster tails. And if he does not control that cost effectively, that inventory, Mm -hmm. essentially you have to manage your inventory every single day to make sure one, that it's not walking out the door and two, that price fluctuations don't eliminate your profits. Right now we're seeing a lot of shortages in certain materials. So you have to adjust your pricing based on the cost. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of food truck owners don't know how to price their menu. They know, don't, don't know what um, their contribution margin is and, why, and how to use it. And so uh, there's a really cool app that I found that Marcus Lemonis came out with. And I found it watching The Profit a couple of years ago. It's called, it is a good show. It's a great show. Yeah. yeah, I love that show. It's called Cost Margin. And so essentially, Cost Margin does the work for you. You just put in your cost. You put in your contribution margin that you want. And it'll shoot out a price. Does that mean that's that's what you're going to put on your menu? No, but it gives you a good idea on how profitable you're going to be. So if something costs you three bucks and you want a contribution margin of 70%, you know you need to charge 10 bucks. So that 70% of that sale will go to pay overhead and extra. And that's where your profit's going to be. A lot of customers, for example, will say, well, no, let's just do that three times the cost. So if you do that, it's only nine bucks. So you just lost a whole dollar in profitability because you're following a rule that somebody made up and everybody says, okay, if it costs me two bucks, just multiply times three and put six bucks on it. And then take a look at your market, man. Your market, what if a product that you have for 10 bucks, there's a truck out there and they're crushing it and they're doing it for 15 why yeah. would you, why would you even lower it? Why would you, unless you want to steal their market and completely, you know, I, I wouldn't change it. Like if your product is be, is just as good or better, charge $15 for it and yeah. see how it goes. It's a lot easier to come down on the price than it is to go up. You know, what scares me about this conversation though, Pat, people can listen to me and you speak about this and they're like, well, Patrick's only talking about a dollar, you know, and that they could minimize this. 
Well, the problem is that dollar, well, if you sell a hundred of those units in one day, that's a hundred bucks. If you do that for call it 21 days in the month, that's $2,100. And if you do that for a full year without understanding it, you're, to, you're talking about $25,000 of top line revenue, or well, you said it was profit, $25,000 in profit. Okay. These things add up guys. So oh, yeah. when, when listening to us speak, or you're watching us on video, realize that even the tiniest little differences that you make to your truck, whether it's switching over and getting better payment processing to make yourself more efficient or pricing the menu correctly, okay? Or getting the right permit so you a $25,000 truck doesn't turn into a $40,000 truck at the start of this. These things matter. That's why I wanted Patrick on here to, to go into how important the little details are. So let's say we found that $25,000 a year. That's in a year and a half, you could have a second unit. Yeah. Literally doubling your business if you do it correctly. So yeah, that's how important those numbers can be. And they do add up quickly. Uh, everybody should be managing their numbers on a weekly basis. That's another thing that maybe there's a shortfall in the industry, not knowing. A lot of people are chefs. They're passionate about food. They need to understand a little bit more about the business side of running a concession trailer or food truck. You have to know your numbers. You have to know what you're, you know, reverse engineer what you want to do on a daily basis or on a monthly basis. How many meals do I have to sell to break even? What is my break even point on a daily basis? What is my break even point on a weekly basis? And then structure everything around that, then invest around that, invest in marketing, invest in maybe bringing in a, a foodie or a food influencer from Instagram to come and showcase your unit. And all it took was a free meal for them. There's a lot of them that have 65,000 followers plus, and all they want is free food. Really? Yeah. So for 10 bucks, not, not even 10 bucks, for three for bucks, that may cost three dollars. <laughs> you just got exposed to sixty five thousand people. There you go. There's the cheat codes. Is there anything that you that we didn't cover? Here? I'm sure. I'm sure there's a lot of things we a didn't lot, cover. Right? We could be here all day if we if we. A hundred percent, man. Yes, sir. Well, listen. I appreciate your time. And uh, can you let anyone know if they want a food truck or they have questions? One, where to find you, what group to join, and two, how to how to get in touch with you. Awesome. Yeah. So if you're interested in starting a food truck, go to our website, trailerkingbuilders.com, or find us on Instagram at trailerkingbuilders.com. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick Bolanos HTX. And um, we have a Facebook group called Food Trucks and Trailer Owners Tips and Tricks. It's long, but there's a lot of people and they, everybody in there is helping each other out. You can come in there, ask any question you want. There's a search uh, area. You can search whatever has been asked in the past. And it's a great tool to find information on how to get started, how to scale, how to grow, et cetera. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much. And uh, guys, tune in for the next one. We'll go into a different industry. I know you guys got a lot out of this. Please share this video and join Patrick's group. All right. Take care, everyone.